many African Americans are now seeking to reconnect with their roots and with the introduction of certain movements like the Year of Return intended to encourage African diasporas to come to Africa to settle and invest into the continent, we have seen a significant amount of migration from Europe as well as America into various parts of the motherland. The Year of Return initiative was a brilliant idea by the Ghanaian government to bridge the gap between Africans in the diaspora to unite with Africans. Starting from when President Barack Obama made a visit to the Cape Coast in 2009, followed by many famous African Americans to discover its culture. But recently, some videos across the internet showcased the experience of some African Americans forced to leave their motherland from various parts of Africa due to certain struggles that they faced. People tend to spend a lot more money than they thought that they would. Now don't get it twisted, we Africans who live here in various parts of the African continent face similar if not the same struggles the diaspora face when they visit. See, we face the reality of the conditions of living every day here. The only difference is that we have been able to adapt to the system. Um, when we first came, we had an idea of what we needed and we had money and things like that. But you don't really know because when you get to a place, there's things that you want to use that, you know, are similar to what you had before and those aren't necessarily local things. So imported things cost more. You know, if you go to the grocery store instead of going to like the markets, that's going to cost more. You know, there's so many different things and I think that you know, people don't really have a real understanding of what things are going to cost and what they're going to be. I want to say this lightly, and I'm not trying to offend anybody or hurt anybody. We got to do better. Why would you want to leave a country that you're struggling in to go to a country, a continent, you're going to struggle worse? Why would you leave a country that you can't make it in and then try to go to a continent that you're not going to make it in? Before we left, I had to pay for our COVID test to leave. Yeah, so we had paid for those things. We had paid for the Airbnb, the COVID test in New York, the COVID test that you had to take here, the Airbnb when we landed. Um, <clears throat> all that was gone. So we had to call family and figure out how we can pay for all of that and then where we were going to stay. You'd, we got too far to turn around. Yeah. It, it was... It felt like we wouldn't get the chance again for some reason. It was kind of like a now or never moment. A lot of that did, I think, come from desperation of wanting to be in a place that we felt more free and seeing him suffer through so many things, through like discrimination, it felt like we were escaping to some degree. So the number one reason why I left Tanzania is because I was getting scammed numerous times. Um, was I scammed? So I left Tanzania and I've been back in the US for almost two months. Um, and for me, it was the best decision that I could have ever made for my future and for my son's future. Um, I was on Facebook and I saw that someone posted um, a picture of them holding up 500 tea shillings. It seemed like they were trying to say that's how much you would have to pay. You would only have to pay 500 tea shillings to fill up your car, which is, I think they said less than 50 cents. The situation for me this time was um, a visa issue um, and I'll go into that in another video. I just feel like it's so much to tell and I need to give the details of that. However, um, that situation was rectified for me, but at the last minute after I decided that I was leaving to go home and there is, you know, someone there in Tanzania that I believe would be great for diasporans to, um, you know, to help them make sure that they get their um, their visas and all the paperwork that they need and to just, you know, not get scammed and someone that's trustworthy. As far as I am concerned, I did what was right for me and what was best for me. It didn't matter what anyone had to say to me. Okay, so quickly, let's look at some of the challenges that is important to note before making a decision to relocate permanently. 
And before that, an important contributing factor fueling this migration is the over-exaggerated social media influencers who paint this picture-perfect rainbows and sunshine experiences without equally balancing out both the pros and the cons or sharing both positive and negative experiences. No system is 100% efficient. So just as much as we are creating awareness of the you know, amazing experiences Africa has to offer, it's also important to draw a contrast between some of the challenges people are going to face by so doing, helping them to be prepared or know what to expect before getting to their destination. People deserve honesty, guys. Now, I get why some of your favorite African, you know, YouTubers never tell the whole truth. Brutal honesty comes with a price that they are not willing to pay. So if you are a diaspora preparing to settle in Africa, please do your due diligence. Do your own research. If possible, visit first and experience the country for yourself before making a decision to move permanently. Now, I have traveled across all 16 regions in Ghana and had some really great experiences. All my videos are on this channel. Now, I'll leave links in the description below. I have many more travels coming up to show you more of Ghana and share insights into everything that you need to know on my travels. So click here to watch my experience driving from the capital to the Savannah region and some of the challenges that I faced during the adventure. Now, it's important to be realistic. And this is an advice to the influencers out there. Also, a major factor to consider which caused so many African-Americans to return are the economic challenges in Africa. Now, we have lack of quality jobs, high rates in unemployment or underemployment, low productivity due to poor human capital development, extremely expensive access to high quality education. Now, these are a few major developmental issues that we Africans face each day. Now, we protest and appeal to our government to do better. Some of these concerns as a diaspora, you need to educate yourself or be aware before deciding to settle in the motherland. Crime, scams, classism, these are issues every country faces in the world and Africa is no exception. This is a major cause for people leaving the motherland. Now, if you look at classism, for instance, foreigners from the United States or Europe are treated better than the locals. Noticing that, okay, I, as a, as a foreigner coming from the US, as a Obruni, I get special treatment and that's, you know, that's not right. Um, you know, why am I being put at the front of the line when this person has been waiting for 10 minutes and they heard my accent and they put me at the front of the line. And, and so seeing those kinds of things, seeing the, the systemic um, issues, such as the disparities between certain areas in Ghana, certain regions. What you also need to realize is that these special treatments also comes at a cost. See, nothing is for free in the world, certainly not in Africa. People do you a favor, they expect you to return the favor. So why put yourself in that position to be treated better than another person only to be manipulated into extortion? Now, talking about extortion, diasporas are the most vulnerable to these petty crimes. The moment people hear your accent, the signal is up. You are from the West, you have money. Even as locals face the same ordeal when we go to town, it's more tribalistic amongst the locals. When building the Royal Heritage Residence, which is an affordable home that I built for travelers, a place that you can book is cheap. Now you can book the place for your events as well. I'll leave a link to the page or you can WhatsApp, you know, this number that I'll drop right here if you want somewhere affordable to stay in Ghana. And I build it because I know the hassle travelers go through in trying to, you know, um, create budget allocations. So go check it out. The local language in the capital city, Accra, is Ga. Now, the majority of people speak the Chi language. Ga is the kind of like the language of the native dwellers in the capital city of Accra. So in the local markets, they speak the Ga language amongst themselves, but I speak the Chi. And finally, when I speak their Ga language back at them, they say, oh, you can speak Ga and you're acting like you are from another tribe. Now, I mean, I am half a Shanti and half a Kyapim, but I speak and understand the Ga language because I grew up in the capital city of Accra. Even us locals face the same problems with extortion. So it's important to do your research on what you need to buy before going to the markets if you want to be able to negotiate deals on what you need. You also have a variety of items at your disposal to choose from. See, I say this because some foreigners will also prefer to totally boycott the local markets and resort to the malls, which have more taxes placed on the items and cost more for the convenience. You are also limited to just what the mall has to offer. While if you decided to try the local market, there are so many shops that you can, you know, move from one to the other and have various options at your disposal. Another tip is that always find a local to assist you to navigate the market 
while being informed about prices of the commodities that you need and you should be fine. Now, it's important to continue this conversation because understanding these challenges is the first step towards creating the awareness of what is to be expected during migration or the integration into another society. Now, see, we want to bridge the gap and create a healthy relationship between the diaspora and Africans. If you are a diaspora, I want you to know Africa is your home. As a matter of fact, Ghana is your home. So come home. Ghana is not perfect, but we wake up every day and we work each day to make it better than it was yesterday. So come home, come home to the friendly, welcoming people, come home to the great food, come home to the great events, the nightlife and all the entertainment that you want in your life. Come home to see the beauty of Ghana, the beauty of our mountains, the beauty of our waterfalls, of Boadaka waterfalls, really waterfalls, the beauty of our rivers, the beauty of our lakes, the beauty of my home and your home, Ghana. My name is Your Heritage. Drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.